to another episode of Literature Podcast. I'm Mish. And I'm Joanna. And today we're going to be going over some Christmas reads that we have either read or are interested in reading this holiday season. This episode was extremely hard for me once I realized that I don't really read Christmas books, like, mm-hmm. absolutely at all. <laughs> like, I've read How the Grinch Stole Christmas and, like, the, all the little books like that. But when I think about Christmas, I typically think of Hogwarts Christmas and The mm-hmm. Great Hall. And then I just want to watch and read Harry Potter again. I didn't put that on my list this year, like for TBR, because first of all, we're already reading it. (laughs) And also because it just seems like such a iconic Christmas book that I don't think it really needs to be on any list. (laughs) Like it just is Christmas. It just is. My husband and I just started this year's marathon, which our marathons take a month or so to actually get through because he works so much and Mm. he doesn't want to watch Harry Potter that long. Like he has a two movie in a row limit with Harry Potter with me now. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. And we're only allowed to watch all of them together once a year. So I always wait until the Christmas tree goes up because then it's time. Christmas and Harry Potter just go together. We just did a full Harry Potter marathon in a weekend with a bunch of my family. and It was like the best thing ever. We need to do that when... When you guys come, maybe (laughs) I'll force him. Like, you're going to sit down for two days. I feel like he would just leave. Be like, all right, I'm going to steal your husband and (laughs) we're going to go. And then it'll just be us and we can build our Hogwarts castle. And they can go bond and do boy stuff. Yeah, and we'll put up the Christmas tree. I don't know what boys do. <laughs> we'll yeah, I already tree. want to. I want to put up the Christmas tree when you come because we haven't <laughs> we we haven't been able to celebrate any holidays together. And Christmas is like one of my favorite holidays, and I do it very well. <laughs> and I want to share the Christmas spirit with you. We can have two Christmases next year. Christmas. I'll put up my <laughs> Christmas stuff when you guys come. There we go. <laughs> All right, it's on. There we go. Plans. All right. So I think we should get started before we ramble on for like another hour. (laughs) Okay. So first on my Christmas reads list is one that I actually have read before. Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Laureen Miracle. I really love this one. I've read it every year for the last two or three Christmases. It's a really funny story. Well, actually, it's three stories. And... The three stories kind of intertwine and all happen at the same time. And near the end of the book, the stories all like meet and like tie together, which I love. This book gives you all the Christmas feels. It gives you, well, I mean, there's a couple Hanukkah feels in it too, I think, but it's just so Christmassy and so fun. Ah, all the warm and fuzzies. This is actually one of the books that has been on my list of books I wanted to read that are actually Christmas related. Hmm. It's been you haven't my... read it? No, I haven't even picked it up yet. I've it's been John to Green. It for two years. I know. <laughs> I suck at life, okay? You know this. <laughs> but, okay, I finally saw it in person at Target in the spring, and I was going to pick it up, but it was, you know, almost summer, and I wasn't feeling it, and now I'm <laughs> regretting it. So I'm just going to have to, like, Amazon Prime that shit and read it mm. this year. You should. It's so fun. I'm surprised you don't have it because you have all the other John Green books. Yeah, that's literally the only one that I don't have. Huh. Though, I would like to see his brother Hank Green do a Christmas story. A (laughs) sci-fi Christmas story with robots and otherworldly beings. And they can all come here and harvest all of our evergreen trees and ruin Christmas. Like a robot type of Grinch story? (laughs) Yeah. You can call it How Robots and Otherworldly Beings Stole Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> your your name for the for the book is just so original. <laughs> I think it would. Just, it would I think go you well. should name books. <laughs> yeah, I think that As a would profession. sell really well. Hmm. So I've come to realize, actually, aside from Harry Potter and Let It Snow, that I don't read Christmas books either. Aside from like the Elf on a Shelf book that I read about. <sighs> 5,000 times during the winter to my kids, which I, it's, it's a good book. I re- recommend it. But the rest of mine, I actually went on to um, Book Outlet a couple months ago, and I ordered like 12 Christmas books. Just 
just because I wanted to read Christmas books this year. So the rest of mine I haven't read, but they're all ones that I have on my table ready to be read. So my first one is What Light by Jay Asher. I read a bit of the description. Um, it's about second chances and learning to see others for who they really are. Sierra passing through town as she and her family do every year, trying not to get too close to anyone while Caleb needs to forgive himself for a single horrible act. As he says, everyone is allowed a bad day, but not until meeting Sierra, Sierra that he truly believes it. Okay. So it's like, I don't know. It's about a girl who lives on a Christmas tree farm and that just sounds so Christmassy. <laughs> I'm not it. I'm not fully trusting this one because I really didn't like 13 Reasons Why. So Jay Asher kind of scares me, but the cover is gorgeous and I can't wait to read this one. All right, the next one on my list is Checking It Twice by Melissa L. Webb. I just recently finished this one. It's a pretty short Christmas horror story, but the story in the beginning we follow Santa where Ooh. they are beginning the Christmas um, events. It's, I mean, I think it's a few months before Christmas where, where the story starts, but the elves are in the North Pole and they have suffered a tragic accident and most of the elf population that was working on Christmas is wiped out. They're just dead. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of makes it hard to pull off Christmas, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Santa has a plan <laughs> that they're going to go through Christmas. They're going to make this happen. Hmm. But have you ever wondered what actually happens to all of the naughty children? Later in the book, we get to follow our main character, Taylor, and his friends, and we get a nice taste of what is worse than coal. It was a really short story. It wasn't super detailed, but I really liked the premise of it. It, it sounds awesome. good. It sounds like it has some major potential. Yeah, like it could really go somewhere if there was more thought and more background put into it. It was really creepy. I, I did like it. I only gave it three stars, but it could easily be a five <clears throat> with some lots of work. With some work. All right. Another one that's on my TBR for the holiday season is My True Love Gave to Me. Okay. It's by Holly Black, Ali Carter, Matt DeLapena, Gail Foreman, Jenny Hahn, David Levian, Kelly Link, Myra McIntyre, Stephanie Perkins, Rainbow Rowell, Lonnie Taylor and Chris Kirsten White. It's got 12 mini holiday stories all written by different best-selling authors. Um, and it's basically like whether you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, winter solstice, or New Year's, there's something here for everyone, apparently. Um, it says, so curl up by the fireplace, get cozy. You have 12 reasons this season to stay indoors. I like reasons to stay indoors, so it's got me hooked. I'm super excited about this one. This is the one that I've been wanting to read for I think it came out last year or the year before, and I've been wanting to read it since then. I've just never picked it up, and it was on clearance on Book Outlet, so this is the year. I'm excited. This is also on my TBR, but I also haven't picked it up. Maybe this <laughs> is another one so by Amazon cute. Prime. And there's, like, such good authors. Hmm. We'll excited. read it together. There we go. <laughs> During our Christmas in July. <laughs> and May, possibly. <laughs> This next story I don't personally recommend, but I read it this year. So, um, The Christmas Guest by Justin Cawthorn. This story is about a girl named Katrina and how she deals with the night guest in her house on Christmas Eve. That is not Santa. I really liked the writing of the story. It was very poetic. Most of it rhymed. So it was, it was just a fun read. That's fun. But I... Did not actually like the story itself. The plot was really flat, just meh. I was really mm. bored with the story. The only thing that was entertaining was how it read. Hmm. But I gave it a one. You know? Boom. But it's Christmassy. It's Christmassy. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My next one that I want to read this year is My New Crush Gave to Me by Shawnee Petroff. Um, I bought this one. It was strictly a cover buy. It was adorable. It looks like an ugly Christmas sweater and I love it. <laughs> I've never actually looked to see what it's about. So let's see. Charlotte Donovan knows what she wants for Christmas. The star athlete and most popular guy in school, Teo. The only problem is he barely knows she exists, but Charlie has a plan. Rig the secret Santa and win Teo's heart the, with the perfect gift. The catch? She has no idea what to get him. 
So this basically sounds like one of those cheesy Hallmark Christmas movies, and I am in love because <laughs> those are my jam. I am so excited to read this one. It's going to be good. Even if it sucks, it's going to be good because... <laughs> because it's cheesy because, and Hallmark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and those movies, although they kind of suck, they're like the best things on the planet. <laughs> I've watched like seven of them already. This oh my gosh. Year. <laughs> the next one that I have on my list is Beware the Snowman by R.L. Stein. I think this mm. is the 51st Goosebumps <laughs> book. I don't have that one yet. <laughs> that one I do. <laughs> but I haven't read this book in a very long time. Mm. But we do get to follow our main character, Jacqueline, and she moves from Chicago to this new place in the middle of nowhere. It kind of sounds like we're about to talk like Courage the Cowardly Dog here. In the middle of nowhere. (laughs) But there's absolutely nothing around them in this middle of nowhere place that she has moved. Apparently it's a very, like, creepy village, and at night she hears a lot of, like, eerie noises that's keeping her up. And then there's a creepy snowman with a red scarf and a deep scar on his face. I didn't know snowman had a scarf. I was just going to say. Yeah. Interesting. You can in this one. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah. I remember I liked it as a kid. I don't know how I feel about it as an adult. I had to read what it was even about. I'm like, I remember getting this in the library. (laughs) There is a snowman. (laughs) Yeah. That is Christmassy. (laughs) Pretty much. I think it's Christmassy, it's snow. But I remember that ever since I read this book, I'm like, I want a creepy winter wonderland. Like, that would be nice. That would be fun. But where I live, there's, I mean, there sometimes is enough snow, but it doesn't last Oh my god, you guys should come here. Yeah. (laughs) We get, like, two feet of snow. (laughs) Yeah. We'll we'll make a creepy winter wonderland. Well, we can't do that in July. Hmm. We can if we... We'll have to come, like, in the winter but, one year. Yeah, we will, unless we want to just buy a lot of, like, crafts. Crafts. <laughs> just, just, like, craft. Go, go to an ice skating <laughs> rink and take, like, the Zamboni shavings. <laughs> well, what are you doing? Nothing. We're, taking We're not nothing stealing home. your ice chippings. <laughs> this is my Just ice go purse. outside with, like, a block of ice and a cheese grater. <laughs> Guys, it's snowing in July. (laughs) (laughs) All right. My last one is called The Christmas Blizzard by Garrison Keillor. Um, I bought this one because, again, I was binge shopping on Book Outlet, and I needed to spend three more dollars in order to get the free shipping. (laughs) (laughs) So I just picked this one up because it had Christmas in the title. Nevertheless, it does sound really good. So snow is falling across Minnesota as Mr. and Mrs. James Sparrow awaken in their modest Minneapolis apartment. She adores Christmas. He loathes it, even nauseated, suffering from a stomach bug. She yearns to see the Nutcracker and a Christmas Carol, while he yearns only to fly to Hawaii to escape the joyless joy, the relentless marketing, and the dreadful pum 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 song on the radio. An emergency has him racing off to his hometown in Loose Leaf, North Dakota, into a heavy blizzard. Uh... Yeah, I I picked it up because it had Christmas in the title, A Christmas Blizzard. But then I realized it was like North Dakota and Minneapolis and or Minnesota. And I was like, that's fun because I go to North Dakota and Minnesota quite often. So I was like, ooh, it's like localish, you know. <laughs> so, and it's supposed to be like a Christmas Carol type of story in what I kind of read about it. So Christmas Carol type stories are my weaknesses. I love, like, the epiphany of, again, it's, like, in every Hallmark cheesy Christmas movie, the epiphany of, like, oh, my God, what have I been doing with my life? Christmas, you know. <laughs> this so. is the time of year everyone has a life crisis. <laughs> yeah. And then an epiphany. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and then they go see Christmas lights. Yeah. And then oh it snows. God. Do you go see Christmas lights? I have it in the past few years. I really want to go. We have, um... In Winnipeg, there's this, uh, we have like the fairgrounds and they put up these big Christmas light displays every year that you can drive through it and see the Christmas lights. And it is gorgeous. It's our tradition. We go there and we go to Denny's and we go get uh, white hot chocolates from Tim Hortons every year. Oh, so good. 
We're doing that next week. <laughs> I'm and excited. Next year. And next year and every year from now till eternity, or at least until Canada stops putting on the Winter Wonderland show. <laughs> yeah, we have Mike and I haven't really seen any lights unless we just happen to drive by and it's someone's house. But you need to come here. I need to give you I need to like shower you with Christmas spirit. Like this is not <laughs> this is not OK. <laughs> You're like, I am the ghost of Christmas present. Come so get your butt over here. I will shove eggnog <laughs> down your throat and we will see Christmas lights. <laughs> Let me baste your throat with this eggnog. <laughs> I am not okay with your lack of Christmas. <laughs> I know you'd be very disappointed with us. It's like the Christmas tree goes up and uh, that's about as far as it goes. Do you see this? What's all going on back here? Oh, I see it. We have Christmas has exploded in my house. I do have a Star Wars Christmas mug. <laughs> it looks like an ugly Christmas sweater. but it's, I love it. Um, That's so cute. <laughs> ugly Christmas mug. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't break your mug. <laughs> Not a broken Christmas mug. It's my only Christmas mug. <laughs> But the last one on my list is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. This is supposed to be, I think, like a Christmas carol retelling. Hmm. But three ghosts come to show the main character, Holly, how sure. egotistical and spoiled she has become. But apparently, unlike all of the Hallmark stories, she didn't get it and she dies. So... <laughs> She now, in her afterlife, is working for a top secret company called Project Scrooge, mm -hmm. where she is now the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> How depressing, Holly. But Holly is now stuck at the age of 17 while she watches her family live on without her each year oh, at Christmas sad. time. But this year, there's going to be something different. I don't know what that thing is, but there's something different. But this book just sounds interesting. I've never it seen a sound Christmas retelling like this. Uh huh. I think I'm seeing why your Christmas spirit is lacking. All of these books you've picked are like <laughs> horrible and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> and then she died. <laughs> Did she ever wonder why the sleigh was red? Mish. <laughs> Come on, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was all we had for today's episode. What are some books that you want to read this holiday season? If you'd like to get more lit, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Castbox, or anywhere else that you listen to us. All of our social media is linked below. <clears throat> If you like this episode, be sure to give it a like or rate our podcast. It really helps us to keep doing what we love. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.